In this video, I'd like to take you guys on a tour of my most used brushes. These are ones I use in about 99% of every sculpt that I do. They find their way, mix and match through pretty much every part of my sculpt, every piece of my sculpt. This, this is my bread and butter. There's some fancier and more specific brushes out there that we can cover in another video. But right now, I just want to walk you through, uh, I think it's about eight or nine of them that I'll use all the time and I think have a lot of value. So let's get started. So the first one is Move Topological. Not regular Move. Move is very useful too. But I find myself using Move Topological even more. And I'll show you why. So you could find it here. as a little, you can see the topology on the icon. I'll click that. And I actually have some hidden meshes here. So Move Topological, what makes it so special is that it's going to apply the movement to the topology of the mesh that you have the cursor on and not the fall off of the entire like red circle here just where my point is landing so to demonstrate this I'll click and drag and you can see it's only moving the topology of this this green uh, poly group here and if I move my cursor over to the next one now it's only moving that one this is super useful in a lot of cases uh, specifically for when you're doing hair or fingers or any geometry that's near each other. Now, if I use regular move, you'll see it's moving both of them. Even if I'm well inside the, the green topology here or the orange, it's moving all of it. So that has its use too, of course. But I find more often than not, I'm using move topological. So I'm going to get rid of those again. Now, on top of that, uh, standard. Honestly, I use standard all the time. Um, I don't use it for detail work or anything. I use it for building up bigger forms easily. I'll use this one in conjunction with um, inflate, actually. So inflate. Let's see if we can find it here. Remember, we could always press I to make it stand out. But here we go. And they're kind of similar. At first glance, inflate is really nice for filling out the forms. Uh, I'll use that if I'm doing really thin things and they're getting a little too thin or if I want to like make a muscle bulge. Um, remember, you could also hold alt and it will do the opposite. So very handy. So standard inflate. A lot of really good use, useful scenarios there. Uh, for a majority of my forms, though, I'll use clay buildup. I used to be big on clay. I still like clay and clay tubes. They're both great. Um, clay tubes more than clay. Uh, but clay buildup I like because it's like tubes, but I could just keep painting and it's going to keep coming out. So this way I have what I feel like is more control to just lay on really thick areas of mass and then carve away with alt and then just smooth it. So I can really just shape whatever mesh that I'm working on really quickly. So it's, it's really quite nice. And I use that in conjunction with uh, the next brush here, which is Dam Standard. So we can find it right here. Dam Standard is like carving in with like a sharp pencil. It's really good for organic forms, for pushing in as well as pulling out. So it has that like soft bulge, which is really nice for pushing in. Um, different parts musculature or just really softly if you lighten the intensity just really softly making these kind of divots you could do wrinkles skin folds that kind of stuff it's really it's kind of subtle right there right now um, but it's super handy and the other thing I'll use it for is to make ridges so if I hold alt now all of a sudden I made myself a really sharp edge there and I'm, I'm not using, um, what is it, pinch or anything, which might change the topology and pull it together. That has, that has its use. But right here, I'm just, yeah, I'm just holding alt. And it gets me a really nice sharp edge. And so again, I can combine with this with smooth. And there we go. Now, in addition to damp standard, I like to use orb cracks. Now, this is one 
I don't know if it comes default in ZBrush anymore, but it's free online. Um, I'll link to it below. But Orb Cracks is like kind of the opposite of Damn Standard in a way. It's also drawing with a sharp point, but it's more mechanical. So let's find it here. M and don't have it visible here. So it makes me think I might not have it installed here. Here it is. So it wasn't showing in my list, but you have to make sure that you install it in your folder. Ah, that's right. It appears at the end here instead of with the other ones. So we have it down there. And so I'll do them side by side. So here's Orb Cracks. Let me subdivide this once. Oopsies. Let me get rid of those. <laughs> They're causing trouble. Let's see here. Apology. Delete hidden. Now we subdivide that. And then versus damp standard. And you can see right away how soft this feels versus how rigid that feels. This is great for stylized stuff. This is great for like cracks when you're doing different kinds of like stone or any kind of like harder surface material. It's it's really nice. Um, even mechanical stuff. Totally recommend it. And again, you could also hold alt and kind of pull things upwards. Now, now with all those out of the way, there are two more invaluable things for doing more hard surface work. One of them is called H polish. One of my favorites. It's down. Where is it? There's regular polish. Here you go, H. Uh, you could just press H and it'll auto select it. I'm just trying to find it in the in the sea of brushes here for you. So there we go. I'll click that. And what this does is it like flattens things out in a really nice way, though. And try to not use it too hard. But so I push on there really softly and look how nice and crisp that is. So even if I do it on a part that's really bulbous, now we got a flat surface. And this could be also useful, again, by pressing Alt, it's going to pull stuff out. So if you do that softly, we can get a really, really nice polished hard surface looking uh, surface without having to do any kind of mechanical modeling. So you're just going back and forth with painting it and then holding Alt and painting it to fill in the crevices. To give you another example of this, I'm going to go to Standard. I'm just going to fill in a hole. Go back to H Polish. So normally H Polish would flatten it. So you could, it, you got a lot of use out of that too. But if you hold Alt, it fills it in really nicely. So this could be really handy for if you have, hmm, let me see if I can do an example, like right here where it kind of has that gap and if I hold alt it'll kind of fill that in so it can be useful for getting edges right up against each other like that so now see how tight that edge is and I'm just holding alt and you have that nice crisp edge whereas if I zoom back it was like that before so that's super handy now the other part is trim dynamic the other brush I like to use for hard surface stuff this trim dynamic. It's kind of like H polish. Let's see if we find it. But when you use it on flat surfaces, it doesn't really do as much good as using it on edges. So if I use it on the crease, it's a great way to bevel. Boom. So now you do that and then go over it with H polish and you just have a really clean bevel. If you tried to do this with H polish, you could probably get away with it, but it wants to conform to one side or the other. So unless you're dead on, See, it's a lot harder. If you press harder, you kind of get it, but then it like flows to one side or the other. But if you use, again, Trim Dynamic, it just saws it right off. So I like to use all these things together. Now, one thing to be aware of is that when you're smoothing things, sometimes if you have um, like a triangle or a pole where it's not even quads, Let's see if I can get a good example. And you try to smooth it, it'll like kind of make this, you could see the triangles, right? Like, let me zoom this down, like right here, right here, right here. And when you have a higher polygon mesh, it could be hard to get rid of it. It just kind of looks lumpy, right? You see all that? It's kind of lumpy. But if you're smoothing, and this is the regular smooth brush, if you're smoothing, 
start smoothing and then let go of shift but keep smoothing all of a sudden it's going to smooth those out it relaxes it outwards and you get rid of that so if i undo see all those little dots it's kind of hard to see i know all those little dots and then after it just becomes this nice smooth area so that can be really handy it's gross and smooth it can be really handy uh, for when you need to polish your surface so that it's a lot cleaner uh, regardless of the topology being kind of nasty so again that was move topological in conjunction with regular move depending on your needs standard brush the clay buildup for moving and pushing around uh, large areas of mass and form dam standard and orb cracks for cutting things in or pulling out sharp shapes the smooth brush obviously for flattening and, and smoothing areas that are a little messy inflate for adding more volume to things or if things are uh, if your meshes are too skinny inflate will will give them a little more so you can move them or sculpt on them properly trim dynamic for cutting bevels and whatnot and h polish for making kind of like flat hard surface looking surfaces now there's one more thing i wanted to go over because i know it comes up pretty often for people um, that are sculpting thinner things so let's see if i can add an example real quick let me add actually we might be able to just do it with the sphere so if i just scale this really thin and this might have happened to you before and you didn't know how to, to fix it or you figured it out either way but say you're sculpting with a big brush like something like clay build up and the other side is doing that and you might not notice until you're already done and it sucks man um, so one thing that you need to do to avoid that is either go with a smaller size which sometimes helps like right there but if you can't you can't always help it um, is to go to brush auto masking scroll down a little and look for back face mask this one right here that's your savior you want to click that and then no matter how much you do on one side it's going to leave the other side alone so this is really helpful it can alter how certain brushes work if they need for some reason the, the back side there i don't know i've, I've had a couple brushes where it kind of act funky so if you're if you're getting that try toggling it and see if it if it helps but otherwise i like to have that one on my ui like i'll make a button and like put it up here or make a hotkey for it uh, but be aware of it because it'll save your butt and it'll stop you from having to redo a lot of work if you forget to turn that on 